how to increase conversions on your go high level websites on this video i'm going to show you how to make it easier for website visitors to buy and opt in on your go high level websites all right so i have nine things that i want to talk about today and the first is why should you listen to me and why is this important let's pretend that you have a gho SaaS agency and you're currently running ads doing cold outreach or making organic content to get leads let's say that on a monthly basis you get a thousand unique visits on your website final vsl and you currently have a 2% conversion rate. So right now that would mean that 20 people buy at 497. So that means you make $10,000 per month. Now let's say that after watching this video, you make a few changes and you make it so that the conversion goes from 2% to 3%. That would mean that not 20, but 30 people buy the same product. Now, the reason why this is so cool is that even though we only increased 1%, of the conversion rate, we were able to increase the revenue by 50%. So that's why having a website that's easy to use and highly optimized with buttons that are clear will help you stand out and ultimately get you more sales. If you're new, my name is Frico and I run a go high level web design agency. I help businesses and agencies that run on high level build better websites that get them more clients. So I have two case studies that I wanted to show you today. So the first is this one that I have on my actual go high level environment. I have this stats for a client. So if you don't know, you can get stats for your own websites on go ahead level here on sites analytics and then you can select whether it's website or funnel and in this case you can also select like the actual website but right now you see that in this period we'll be able to increase the conversions by a hundred percent so from 1.4 to let's say 2.8 percent sales actually almost like 5x of course some of that can be attributed because of the fact that the website is getting more page views but let me show you a different scenario in this case let's say even if the page views or the amount of total people that was on this website was lower because our conversion rate increased, we were still able to drive more sales. So that's the beauty about having a website that is optimized. Now, the second example that I wanted to show you is GHL's website. So I don't have the actual stats, so I won't be able to say how good or how bad their new website is doing. But if you've been on high level for some time, you know that this is their website. This is the website that they had. And now it seems like they have a new website, which is this one right here here it's not just the colors there's a lot more going on and i'll show you at the end of the video why they made the changes that they made and not only that but you'll be able to implement these in your websites as well let's jump into the first point for buttons so we want to make sure that the buttons are clear and simple so if you don't take anything else from this video just make sure that the buttons that you add to your website are clear and are simple to illustrate this point i have this landscaping website right here and you see that here they have a button here which is to get started and a button to request a quote right here now there's a lot of things that i would do to improve this website but the key is that they've made it very easy for a prospect to get in touch as opposed to this website right here these are two landscaping companies in the same city and you see that here there's no clear button like as a user i am expecting the main call to action to be here and in this case i don't see that if i start scrolling i have to dig myself into here and even if i click here you see that i don't even get taken to a place where i can just submit my information to get a free quote so just making those small tweaks will help that your website will convert more. In this case, however, you see that it's very easy. And as soon as I click this right here, I get taken to a form where I can very easily submit my information. All right, the next thing that I wanted to show you is the size and the shape of the buttons. So for this, you wanna make sure that you have buttons that have the right size, that are consistent, and that are also easy to click even on mobile. You wanna make sure that you make it not only so that they're wide, but also thick enough to make it easier for a prospect to click on a phone. And if you have too many small buttons that are close to each other, the user might just end up clicking on the button that they didn't. And if it's hard to use for them, they might just exit that website and go to a competitor. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to show you is how you can use color and contrast to your advantage. So so here you see that there's different colors, different stuff going on, but they've made it so that the buttons pop. You see that the contrast is very clear from this black to this blue. So I know for sure that is a button and it's the same here from a black to a white. And when I hover my mouse, you see the contrast is very clear. So I know exactly that I'm going to be clicking on the button. All right. The next thing that I wanted to show you is placement and spacing. And for this, I'm going to show you different Shopify stores. You've probably visited a lot of different websites that have this layout headline sub headline and then button and the reason why this layout is so widely used is because it works a website visitor would be expecting a button very clear on the hero section right here 
or a button right here, which is kind of what I do when I build websites for my clients. And you've seen on my previous videos. The next thing that I wanted to show you is how to add feedback and state. And for this, I'm actually going to use Go High Level's new website. So basically what feedback and states mean is kind of like what happens when you hover over that button or when you click on that button, we expect feedback. In this case, when we're on a website, when I hover my mouse, I expect it to change color or to, in this case, jump, as you see right here, or to have some sort of effect, which lets me know, okay, that is a button. I, you see that here, when I hover my mouse, the color changes. It is very easy to know that, okay, that is a button. And subconsciously, it's kind of incentivizing to click. For accessibility, the main thing is you want to make sure that you have fonts that are easy to read on your buttons. In this example, you see this font is very hard to read. So the fact that you can't even know, okay, where is it that I'm going to go when I click that button is going to make it less likely that a actual website visitor clicks. So making sure that you have a font that is clear, easy to understand, and that has a high contrast between the background and the actual font color will make it even easier for your prospects to click on the button. Number eight is you want to make sure that the buttons are consistent. In this case, you see that the buttons, I have three different style of buttons, which is very inconsistent. This one is round edges in green, and this one is gray and has sharp edges. And this one doesn't even have a border. Let me show you an example of an HVAC company that had buttons that were consistent, which I thought were very cool. So if I click right here, you see that all of the buttons right here are consistent. They have the same font, the same color. So as a user, as I scroll down, I know that the experience is very consistent and subconsciously the website designer is kind of like guiding me to actually go ahead and click this as opposed to this as i mentioned like has different colors different styles and it's just completely messy the thing is i see a lot of go high level websites trying to get creative but overall the more stuff and colors you add to the different buttons it's going to make it so that it's more confusing for a prospect to take a decision and therefore not likely to buy all right the last one is my favorite and is one that i don't see a lot of go high level websites used to their advantage and it's the hierarchy. Now hierarchy helps us prioritize action and make sure that our website is logical. Now to illustrate this point, let me show you Notion's website. They've incentivized me to just get started for free as opposed to book a demo. They want to make it so that you try the product. Starting a trial has more priority over getting a demo. Here I am on Alex Ramos's website and you see that they have two buttons and they've made it so that this button pops, which is the one that is like the main action. They want me to buy the book as opposed to just learn more about Alex. For an e-commerce store, let's say you're selling products on a go high level website, you want to make sure the main action is buy as opposed to like learning about the history of the company and whatnot. Here you see that on go high levels old website, these two buttons had the same hierarchy or the same importance. Starting a trial was the same as logging into the app. But here on their new website, you see that logging in is now small. And they've made it so that the main buttons are both consistent now. It's to start a trial. So very subtly, that's one of the ways that they improve their website to make it more likely that somebody starts a trial and doesn't get confused. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to implement this practically on the Go High Level website editor. Something that I see that is not intuitive is that this button, it's very hard for me to know that it's a button. I want to make it so that this button will be in a position that is predictable and that the user actually expects it to be. So instead of being top left, I'm going to make it so that it's in the top right. So let me just flip this right here. And if I go to advanced, I had it as reverse on purpose. I can do it so that it's default. And now it looks a lot more natural, more how you would expect a website. Of course, what I would do here is add a border. So that's what I'm going to do right now add it so that it has let's say this color right here so at least now i know that that's a button of course we're gonna fix it and do some more stuff but that's one of the things that i would do so if in your current website you have buttons that have round and sharp edges you want to make sure that these are consistent in this case i want to make it so that all of my buttons have round edges so let me just click this button first go to advanced and then just note what the actual border radius is. Okay, so it's 15. So when I click on this button, I can go to advanced. And then when I click here on border, make sure that I hit full border. And for the border radius, I will just do 15. So that small change makes it so that it's a little bit more consistent. The second thing that I notice is that this font is very hard to read. And not only that, but it's also not consistent. So I want to make sure that all of my button fonts are consistent. So I'll click here. And then instead of this, I'll just make it so that I have, let's say, Roboto. And I'll do the same for all of my different buttons very quickly. Another thing that I see is that there's not enough contrast on these buttons. So I'll click on this button. 
and change the color. So from black, I'll make it so that it's white. So you see a lot more contrast, easier to read, easier to understand. I don't like the layout of these buttons too much. I wanna make them so that it's side by side instead of like one after the other. So what I'll do is click on the column and then here where it says content alignment, I'll select horizontal. And now you see that I have both buttons side by side. If I wanted to make this so that it's a little bit more tight, I could just do this like this. Or if I wanted to make them further apart, I would just be able to do this. I think I'm gonna keep it at 45. Going back to Notion's website right here, you see that this button to start the trial had more importance than requesting a demo, seeing client testimonials and whatnot. So that is what I'm gonna fix here on my website as well. You see that this button has kind of like a color, so I don't know which one is more important. I'm gonna show you two ways that you can sell your buttons. So what I would just click here, make it so that this is transparent and then on the color, I would make it so that it matches this green right here. So that's this green right here. And same for the border. So you see for the border, I'm gonna click on that same green. So that is how I can tell my website visitors know that this is the main action that I want them to take. Now I'm gonna show you a different style. So what you can do is click on the button right here, get rid of the border altogether, make it here so the border is transparent. But if you wanna still make it so that it's a button, kind of like Notion's website, what you can do is click on the button. And then here where it says icon picker after, you can just type arrow and then for instance, click here. So that's how very easily you would also be able to create that button that we saw here on Notion's website. All right, so there's a couple things that I wanna talk about. First, I wanna make it so that this button and this button are of the same hierarchy, same importance. And to do that, of course, what I'm gonna do is click on this button, make sure that the background is of that green and make the text white so that it's very easy to read. Now, the problem here is that these two buttons don't even have the same text. So it's the same action. So I wanna make sure that I am consistent, but not only that, an effective call to action is one that starts with an action and not a noun. So in this case, software trial is not as powerful as get started for free or start your 14 day trial, which is kind of like what Go High Level has right here as well. Start a 14 day trial for free. In this case, you see that it's start for free and in Notion also get Notion for free. So always starting with a verb, so that it's an action incentivizes the user to take that action. Even here, request a demo. Instead of just saying software trial, we would just say start today for free. And then for this one, what I could do is just see testimonials. Now for this one, I could just change the text, but a trick is to always tell one button exactly how you want it to be. And then kind of just duplicate that button and put it up there. Before I do that, I wanna make it so that when a user hovers over this button, it will kind of like jump. So let me show you here in advance so you'd be able to do that for button effects, I will make it so that it elevates on hover. So now you see that when I hover my mouse over it, it kind of like jumps. I do see that there's like a white background. So let me just fix that very quickly. Here, I will make it so that it's of the same green. And now you see it jumps very nice, very interactive. I would then duplicate that button and actually go ahead and place it up there and delete the other button. Now you see that it's a bit too big, so I can just move this just like this. Now that I'm done, what I'm gonna do is click save right here. So we started with a website that looks like this, that was not intuitive and subconsciously was making it harder for our prospects to actually convert and get started. And we finished it something that looks like this. It's a lot more predictable, it's more beautiful, and it's more standard, which we know will help convert. It's a trusted layout and trusted design that works. And at the end of the day, it just helps us get more clients. Anyways, I hope you find this video valuable and you can take away some of the nine things that I mentioned here so that you can build better websites on Go High Level, which ultimately help you get more sales. But with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.